over the last few months worth of mail bags, I've been acquiring quite the assortment of music player type uh, modules. There's this one, which is a radio and uh, MP3 player. Here's that crappy little audio uh, card, uh, or USB audio uh, thing for the laptop. Um, there's a remote control for that. There's this one that showed up in the recent mailbag. There's another MP3 player. I think it's, is that an FM radio as well? No, this is a Bluetooth uh, uh, MP3 player uh, with SD card slot. And then there's these tiny little FM radio modules. But today, I'm going to play with this most recent one, which is called a DF Player Mini. And it comes... Oh, not with the SD card in it, but um, it comes with the pins already on it. And I did a bit of looking around and I was able to find uh, the manufacturer seems to be DF Robot. And I was able to find their web page that has a fair description of the thing. And here it is on DF, DF Robot's uh, website. Um, this is almost a data sheet. Um, explains the thing and its various different uh, applications and modes and whatnot. At its core, it's just an MP3 player, but it does a few other things. It can drive speakers directly, or it can output line level just from the digital analog converter. Um, it appears to be able to connect to a USB uh, memory device and use that for its source of music though I don't really think I'm going to play with that that much um, normally it uses its built-in uh, micro SD and these are the interesting things over here for me anyway the different uh, two address key lines two IO key lines or IO lines and if we scroll down um, so there is some uh, command language stuff and whatnot, but there's three different modes or ways of controlling it. Um, this address key mode, basically on address key one and two, you can hook up a matrix of of uh, buttons and with different resistors in series with them to ground onto that one. So you can control any number of functions just from the one pin. Um, play mode, uh, loop all, play pause, previous and next and volume, and direct access to four different segments or audio files. And on the other key with the same values of resistors but going to the other input, um, you have access to another bunch of uh, another ten uh, audio segments. So you can either use it as just normal MP3 player um, to just play all of them, loop all is what it calls it, or you can jump directly to a specific segment, which goes back to their description up here somewhere, uh, to use it for voice prompts and uh, voice announcements and whatnot. You can just have it n sitting there not playing or looping a standard message, and then when you hit one of these buttons, it will jump immediately to one of the uh, one of the speci specific segments, which is pretty cool. The other way of doing it is using the two I/O buttons or the I/O lines, and with those, you can just drive them directly to get uh, previous or next track and volume plus and minus. And then if you want. Um, on the address keys you can put a couple of buttons on with no resistor the same as you were up here uh, and you can go directly to segment one or segment five so you can put something special on those ones or you can connect it to the TX and RX pins and connect it to an Arduino so I'm gonna play I'm gonna uh, go back to the workbench and uh, set up all three of these different scenarios. I'm not going to go through every single possible button. I'm not going to set up all 20 buttons. That would be silly. But I'm going to set up a handful of them 
and I'll use the demo code that comes with it uh, also from from uh, DF Robots web page uh, they've got a library an Arduino library with a couple of uh, a couple of bits of code uh, to go with it and actually this is one of the ones that I'm going to uh, I'm going to show show you basically it just plays three seconds of each song and then skips to the next one and then there's a bit I've modified that a little bit and I'll tinker with that too and it comes with this other uh, piece of code called full function which has in it every possible function that you can do so you wouldn't want to run this one just as it is because it would just go berserk and do all manner of stuff um, interestingly though there is a function you can have multiple folders or directories and you can go directly to any file within those so now then back to the bench all right here i have it just set on a breadboard i've got uh, uh, one of the speaker lines and ground connected to a speaker i don't have a second oh, i don't have room on my bench for a second speaker and it doesn't really matter for this demo um, I've got five volts coming from my uh, usual little power supply here. I'll just zoom back in into that a little bit. And I've got ground. I've got power just on a little jumper down here. Uh, speakers and just one wire to tap uh, pins with uh, connected also to ground. So I'll turn the power on. A little bit of noise and stuff. Seems to default just to doing nothing. But if I tap uh, aisle one, which is uh, next and volume minus, next if you tap it, and volume minus if you hold it, that's kind of cool. Um, then grounds in, in the second pin, the third pin in is aisle two, which is previous, if you tap it. And volume up if you hold it. Just, so that's the absolute most basic mode that you can get it in. However, it plays the song that it's playing and then it pauses and waits for you to do something. It doesn't loop them in this basic mode. So it's not probably not the best thing to uh, to use for like a portable pocket. Uh, mp3 player or something the other two lines the uh what were those called uh 81 and 82 um if you remember from seeing the data sheet they will directly access a couple of uh, songs so this one 81 always accesses song one the beginning of it and right now too and 82 directly accesses song five. Now then, I'm calling them song one or segment one is what they call them, two, three, four, five. That's not the name of them. They can be named any arbitrary thing you want. That is the order in which you copied them to the SD card. So basically their order in the file allocation table, the fat table. Uh, which if you're changing files on there frequently probably will be a pain if you're trying to directly access them i don't know something to think about if you want to use this for a sound effects box or something but if you load it once and forget it and just use it that probably wouldn't be a headache so now then, let's try this in the second mode which is a bunch of buttons and resistors i've only got uh uh, what have I got here? Four resistors plus the two direct access modes. I'm just going to hook all this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are back after a little break for me to hook this guy all up. So I've got the first two buttons just connected directly to IO1 and IO2, which are the uh, next and previous and volumes. And then the rest of these I've got, these three I've got hooked up to 
where is that going? 82 through three different resistors to direct access three different songs. And this other one I got connected to AD1. I've got uh, this one direct, so that uh, direct access is, hang on, that direct access is uh, song five. And then I've got, no, I'm sorry, uh, song one. Uh, that's AD1, right? Um, and the other button is pause play. So that's through a 33K resistor. And that goes straight to the song. That goes straight to another song, straight to another song, straight to another song. But it's always the song it's, that that resistor is selected. Um, and then these two again, next, previous, volume up, volume down. So you could get a fairly basic uh, just normal mp3 function out of this just with a few resistors and buttons uh, uh, you could have it set to loop all which is a 51k resistor on this no on this line sorry if I wanted to just uh, tap that at the beginning and then if I needed to make a special announcement just go directly to that song or Right, picture those as voice announcements. Now, what I, as a just a guy, might use that for, I don't know. Maybe use it for platform announcements on my model railroad. I don't know. So, all those same functions are also available through the Arduino connection, which I will set up for you now. Okay, back again. This is all disconnected, although I could have left it connected. Um, those pins will still function. But now I have the Arduino, and I have it programmed to... Well, I'll show you the code in a second. But basically, I've uh, gutted out one of the demo sketches and modified it slightly so that I've got direct access to some songs on on a few of the pins and I think one of them I got set up as a next. So let's just try pin two. Pin three, there we go. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit here. Just using that long hold mode. So pin two. Yeah, pin two I got set up as a next. Pin three goes directly to this one every time. Hit the next, and then go back to that one. Pin four goes directly to a different song. Pin five. I don't think I got anything on pin six, no. So there's that, and then I can still use these buttons to go back and next. If I had the button board connected or oops ground's coming out or I can volume down so I think that's pretty slick so basically anything you can put in a program you can use to uh, to tell it any of the functions that's available that we looked at earlier on the uh, any of the functions on the buttons um, so play mode, up, down, looping modes and whatnot. Um, oh, and the other thing, I think I told this thing from the top of the sketch to just go into a loop all. So now it should, well, actually let's take a look at the sketch. And I'll just leave the music running in the background. So this is the get started sketch one of the two sketches that comes with it um, it's got a bunch of stuff in it that I'm not going to show you it's got a serial or it uses the serial print to uh, dump stuff out to the serial the Arduino serial monitor but when I have the laptop connected to the Arduino while it's playing music there's a horrendous background noise which I think is coming 
on the ground uh, of the USB from my laptop. So I'm not going to assault your ears with that because you'll hate it. Um, but it uh, does some diagnostics off the top, sets the volume. Um, they, I think, set it to 10. I set it to 15 just for the speaker I'm using. And starts playing the first one. And then their script, just every... Well, they had it set to three seconds. I changed it to five. Um, just hits the next button every five, every, yeah, every three or five seconds, depending on what you told it. And then there's a bunch of error messages, again, that dump out onto the serial, the, uh, serial monitor, which I haven't experimented with because it assaults my ears. And here's the modified sketch that we're listening to right now. Um... I just set some some pins to input uh, with pull-ups and set it to mid-range volume. I was experimenting there and that's commented out, but the last thing it does before it leaves the setup is enable loop all. So it just plays everything on the SD card unless you tell it to do something different, which is what happens in the loop. Um, just digital read pin three, four, and five, uh, two, three, four, and five, and uh, pin two, as we saw, hits the next button. Pin three goes to song one, pin four goes to song two, and pin five goes to song three. And as you saw, it goes immediately there, too. There's no waiting and no pause. So you could use this without putting it into loop mode. You could put a bunch of sound effects on it and trigger the sound effects from a button board or something. That might be fun. If you needed uh, to have a bunch of sound effects just sitting waiting for you, you could either use uh, what, 15 of them directly from the buttons with resistors or an unlimited amount from, a, from buttons connected to your Arduino. All kinds of things you could do with this cool little toy. Unfortunately, being just an, uh, a standard MP3 player isn't really what this thing's made for, but that's okay. Uh, MP3 players are cheap, ubiquitous, and on your phone and everywhere else, so there's no real need to do one here. I'm going to go back to the workbench now. I think I'm tired of staring at code. All right, so that's just a quick little experiment with this thing i've been spending a lot more time than what you saw um if you've been watching my channel you know that i am kind of allergic to code the modified code that you saw that i'd created on the screen there probably took me about three or four hours to get it all debugged and working right and everything this button board and figuring everything else out half an hour that simple little chunk of code pulling my hair out Anyway, I think this is a cool little module for what it does. Um, you can think of a few different uses for it. If you can think of other uses for it uh, down in the description. Um, it was super cheap. It was out of, came out of a mailbag a couple of weeks ago. I'm pretty sure it was only a buck or two. And for that, you could embed noises and push buttons into anything you want. Oh, that's, that's it for today. Um, I know it's not the biggest project in the world, but I was just tinkering and thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Thanks for watching. If you have anything to say, as always, down in the comments, I'll talk to you again.